Today we are going to have a look at Silverstone's PF360 ARGB or Permafrost 360 ARGB, Silverstone's answer to the already clustered AIO liquid cooler market. But Silverstone got one up its sleeve. They combined the undeniable power of voodoo paired with the pure nature in form of an illustration of a snowflake in order to get the temps down even further. Let's find out if losing half their staff while performing the ritual was truly worth it. So this is the Silverstone Permafrost PF360 ARGB. As the name might already suggest it, this is the 360mm version out of this IIO series, available also in 240 and 120mm versions, with one or two fans respectively. Additionally, you can also get the 240 and 360 version in white. Inside the box you will get a whole army of things. Ignoring the obvious AO itself, three of the fans and the mandatory pack of mounting hardware paired with some thermal paste, we will also get a few extra goodies. The first one comes in form of an included ARGB controller. This one can be used in case that your motherboard does not come with a 3-pin ARGB header. To get it going, we just need to hook up one end of the controller to a SATA power cable of your power supply. And the other end needs to be connected to the fan and pump header ARGB cable using that weird proprietary to not so proprietary port. Another cable inside the box will be this regular 3-pin ARGB to gigabyte and ARGB adapter. By using that same proprietary to not so proprietary cable we used on the controller, we can use this thing to make the IIO compatible with older gigabyte motherboards, which is not really necessary as they have already stepped down a long time ago and now everybody uses 3-pin ARGB. The last piece of extra weird cable would be this ancient Molex piece to fan header adapter. This can be used to hook up your pump directly to the power supply making it spin at 100% all the time. Nice addition but not very much necessary or at least not as long as it is not SATA. Getting back to the AIO itself, we got support for quite a list of CPUs. LGA 1700, 1200, every 1150. 2011 and 2066 on Team Intel. Over on the red side we got AM5, AM4 and so on until FM1. While we are at it, let's also quickly go over the installation mechanic. Installing the AIO on top of an AMD CPU does not require anything extra. We just need to take the water block and shove that AMD mounting bracket onto it with the ends pointing upward. From there we need to take those hooks provided in the box shove them through the mounting holes and fix them using the thumb screws. After slapping some thermal paste on the CPU, we can try to fiddle these hooks into the pre-existent AMD retention brackets and what a joyful experience might I ask, and then just tighten everything up. Over on Intel's side, it's a bit more complicated. Here we first need to take the Intel backplate and shove the Intel screws through the appropriate hole and fixate them with the plastic washer on the other side. If you're unsure which hole to use, just place the bracket behind your motherboard and just look through the holes. Once the backplate is positioned behind the motherboard, we can place the Intel space holders on top of the outsticking screws splash some thermal paste onto the CPU and prepare the water block by shoving the retention bracket with screw holes on each corner into it. Now just place it on top and screw each side down with the spring screw and voila, done. Just don't forget to hook up all of the RGB connections and fans too, those poor fellas need some power too. Speaking of which, let's go to the fans. For their Permafrost series, Silverstone includes a bunch of Airblazer 120Rs. These are relatively fast spinning 120mm fans capable of keeping at up to 2200rpm while pushing 93 3.97 CFM at 3.53 millimeters of H2O. So as far as raw stats are concerned, these have been tailor-made for radiator usage. To power them we have the usual 4-pin PVM header, but thankfully Silverstone also includes a 3 to 1 PVM splitter inside the box in order to hook all of them up to a single PVM header on your motherboard. The majority of this AIO's RGB is also coming from those fans. In the central piece of the fan, Silverstone placed 8 little LEDs that are shining their light through the semi-transparent milky material, which is a pretty standard concept nowadays. Though I would have preferred to have the light a bit stronger and it is not 
it is not really fully reaching the outer borders in my opinion. In order to control all of the RGB, we've got the standard 3-pin ARGB connector coming out of each fan. However, thankfully for my own sanity, there is an ARGB splitter attached right next to each ARGB header. This means that you can just daisy chain one fan to the other one and run the whole thing of a single motherboard header while being controlled with whatever software that you yourself prefer. And don't think that the one splitter left at the last fan is wasted. As the water block pump cover also got some RGB going, we can perfectly use that one to connect it to the whole chain and you have four RGB devices, a single port, perfectly fine. Speaking of which, the water block pump combo is arguably the most beautiful thing about this AIO in my opinion. Although it is a completely personal thing that you need to decide for yourself, I absolutely fell in love how this looks and I believe the the cleanness of the Silverstone Snowflake paired with those very etched borders around, it, ju it just looks amazing in my opinion. Underneath the whole thing, we will find a full copper base that looks appropriately sized for today's CPU sizes. Whew, that's been the general overview and it's been quite some time since I last had such a long one. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's finally get to the benchmark section and find out if that snowflake had any effect on any of the performance at all. While letting the 3900X perform some weird voodoo stuff, the Silverstone Permafrost PF360 managed to keep the CPU at 46 degrees C above ambient. That's actually on par with the Liquorizer LQ360 and Arctic Freezer 360 ARGB, a very very good result. Actually, I am I'm kind of shocked about this result. The reason for that are the fans. Not that they are like bad or anything, or at least that the spec sheets suggest that they are pretty freaking good. No, it's it's their wings. Sure, heavily bent wings uh, are on many fans out there. Yeah, that's like the usual static pressure way to go. But the material that they've used is highly flexible and I used to believe that this softer wing material is, will have a more negative impact on performance, especially on radiators. That's just what my experience showed me. But no, among the very best. I stand corrected. However, it is still possible that those air blazers are just you know, brute forcing their way up the ladder. And that's why we got the noise to performance graph. Here we were able to see something quite interesting. The permafrost is actually pretty much on par with a Xilinx Liquorizer LQ360 from start to finish. Those two are just battling their spot while outperforming pretty much everything we have ever tested and only being behind things like a silent loop or a non-RGB Arctic liquid freezer. So no, in the end, the permafrost did not brute force its way up the ladder and be by that becoming some sort of a PC Kersha equivalent. And as it turns out, the, the permafrost is performance and noise-wise pretty much equal to a liquorizer, which is a very respectable thing. So where does all of this leave us? Well, I'm a bit baffled, although the review started off with a quite odd feeling that the fans may, may end up being an issue, uh, but no, they were not. Um, performance-wise, absolutely nothing to nag. And this also counts for the quality. Everything is nicely sturdy well made except for the material of the wing which is like highly bendable but if you ignore that or if you just don't touch the fan blade which you should never do it's still pretty much all right the only thing that i would have preferred is uh, for tube length we have 400 millimeters and i believe 450 is more appropriate for like a 360 aio but that's like i mean 400 is still okay there are AOs out there with 350 so it's still okay and a, and a very special type of side note um one thing that would, I would have also preferred is to not have like a that highly reflective material on the water block. Uh, I swear, making B rolls for for this thing was so freaking hard. It, it wasn't even funny anymore. Like I had to to uh, switch the position of the camera so much around the whole table just to get like a, a shot without the light of 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 the spots reflecting. It it was horrible. So uh, yeah, but that's. I think that's just like a b-roll thing. On the price side, the permafrost is going for around 109 euros, which funnily enough is exactly the same price as a Liquid Freezer 360 ARGB, so I guess it's, it's perfectly priced and from our side, it's in a recommendation. There is nothing negative to be said. But okay, this should be it for about the Silverstone Permafrost 360. 
At this point, a huge thank you to Silverstone for sending it over. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Silverstone Altar case that we reviewed some time ago. It, is, it, is, it, it has become one of my personal favorites. On a side note, we now also have channel memberships. So if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, rest assured that the income will not only be used to keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get an army of little snowflake stickers uh, because apparently that helps to keep AIOs cool, so uh, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't be a viable solution for climate change. I will glue those suckers to everything. Walls, concrete, cars. Let's make the world a cooler place. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.